guys it's kyla at the mjc and today we're going to go through the filing instructions for the part two separate with minor children but before we jump into the checklist just a few things i want to make sure everybody knows uh the first is as you've probably heard me say before nothing in this video is intended to be legal advice this video in particular is all procedural information about filing it doesn't even go into situations when you would typically file these forms uh, so, if you have questions about whether this is the right set of paperwork for you, whether you're going to get what you're asking for, if you need to bring anything to court, um, all that kind of stuff, uh, those are great questions for legal advice. Here in Milwaukee, you can get brief legal advice for free through the Marquette Volunteer Legal Clinics. The second thing I want to let everyone know is that this checklist is accurate as of the date of recording, which is December 16th of 2020 but this has been recorded as a uh, temporary COVID-19 pandemic filing procedure. I do anticipate that down the line at some point, uh, when we return to slightly more normal services, the procedure will change. So um, if you've gotten this through our website or through a, uh, an MJC or MVLC volunteer, uh, most likely it is still accurate or substantially accurate. Uh, but if you've gotten this from the open internet, or if it's been a while since uh, since this was produced, again, December 16th of 2020, then you may want to double check to make sure that the filing procedures haven't changed. Last but not least, um, I know it's possible that some of you who've been riding along on this journey with me have are planning to file in counties that aren't Milwaukee. Most of the forms we fill out, as you know, are fairly universal. They're used in all of the counties. Uh, and I tried to point out when we had uh, forms that were just Milwaukee, but um, filing is really county specific and Milwaukee is pretty idiosyncratic as far as that goes. So if you are planning to file in a county other than Milwaukee, rather than watching this video, which I think will only be marginally helpful if you are not filing in Milwaukee County, for those of you that are filing in Milwaukee, hold tight. Um, but for those of you who are filing in a county other than Milwaukee, your best bet is probably to contact your clerk of court and see if they have any, uh, directions or filing instructions about what they want you to do with the paperwork in your county. All right, well, now that we've got those things out of the way, let's jump into this checklist. So we're going to start right at the top here with a little roadmap that's just going to go through the forms you need, any additional items you need, costs and fees, and the general process, and then we'll do a little bit of a deeper dive. So first things first, what forms do you need? Uh, you do need the financial disclosure statement. That's a document that looks like this. Uh, you will need the request for pretrial. It's a document that looks like this. And again, yours should be filled in. Um, I hope that that is, uh, that that's self-evident, but yours should be filled in. I'm just trying to show you what the forms look like. So the ones I'm showing you are blank, uh, but you obviously want to make sure yours are filled in. You will need the proposed marital settlement agreement. Make sure it is the proposed marital settlement and that it is with minor children because these forms look awfully similar to the ones without children and to the ones that aren't proposed. So make sure yours is proposed with minor children. Um, next, you will want the proposed parenting plan document. Looks something like this. Uh, if you are requesting that child support or maintenance be paid, then you'll want to fill out the interim financial summary. It's a form that looks like this. Um, next, you'll want to do an order for pretrial order to appear. So it's going to look something like this. If you got the real you know, hard copy forms packet, this may be a self-copying document. But if you're doing it online, it's going to look like this. Good. Uh, then you'll also want the declaration of non-military service. That form looks like this. Then you'll want the divorce annulment worksheet, this one. And then uh, you will also want the findings of fact and conclusions of law and judgment with minor children, A form that looks like this. It's got the big gap at the top. 
Um, you'll also want the party's approval of the findings of fact, conclusions of law and judgment. This is the document that you will sign. And then last but not least, if you are asking to go back to a former surname, or if you are asking that your spouse have the right to go back to a former surname, you'll also want to do the abridgment regarding surname form. So a lot of forms there. You'll need a few additional items. You will need a proof of service. So that would be an affidavit of service from the sheriff. If you used an admission of service signed by your uh, spouse, it would be that admission. Um, could be an affidavit from a process server. Um, it could be uh, a third party affidavit done by a friend or family member. So make sure you've got your proof of service document. You'll want to make sure that you have completed the parent education class and that you have that completion certificate. You'll also need three large manila envelopes and 12 stamps. And you're going to take, and that you want big manila envelopes, like eight and a half by 11 at the smallest and maybe even the next size up. And you'll want to make sure with those uh, manila envelopes, what you're going to do is you're going to put four stamps on each of the three envelopes. And then you're going to address two of the envelopes to yourself. So as if they are being mailed to you, and you're going to address the third one as though it is being mailed to your spouse. Uh, last but not least, there is the uh, fee waiver, which is optional because there are some fees associated with filing this. There is the $5 docketing fee. That fee actually can't be waived. So you'll have to pay the five bucks no matter what. However, you do have to serve your spouse one more time. I know, I know, this is the part where people usually groan, but you're getting close. This is the last time you should have to serve your spouse. Um, but you'll have to do that again. So if you're doing it through the sheriff, they charge $85, but they will waive that fee with the fee waiver. You'll also, if you're doing the fee waiver, need proof of assistance. Uh, so public proof of public assistance or proof of your income. So as far as the general process for filing, you need to gather everything that you need to file. You need to file everything at the courthouse. You need to serve your spouse and attend your hearing. So let's get a little more detail on these things. The first and probably most onerous task here, getting everything you need to file ready. So getting everything ready consists of a few things. You're going to review your paperwork and make any edits or additions needed. You're going to print everything, sign everything, make photocopies of everything, and if anything needs to be notarized, we'll talk about getting it notarized as well. So if you worked with the MJC team, you may have some notes in these edits or additions boxes of things you need to change on the forms. Maybe you need to add a social security number. Maybe you need to get your bank account number for the financial disclosure statement. So make sure that you make any edits that you see in this chart. You'll also want to make sure that you review all of the forms carefully to make sure that your name is spelled right, that your spouse's name is spelled right, that addresses and phone numbers look right, and all that sort of stuff, especially if you worked with uh, our MJC team. Once you have reviewed it and you're comfortable that the forms look right, the next thing you'll want to do is print everything off. Uh, you'll want to make sure that everything is printed single-sided. And as far as places that you can print, obviously if you have a printer or if you have a friend who has a printer or if your work has a printer you're allowed to use uh, for personal stuff, then those are all great options. If you don't have any of those options, you can try calling the law library at 414-278-4900. They have been closing intermittently um, due to the rise in COVID-19 cases, so we do recommend that you call them to confirm when they will be open uh, and to make sure that they will have printing and copying services when you want to go in. If you don't want to wait for the library, you can go to FedEx Kinko's. Some of the uh, big, bo big box stores like Office Max have uh, copying and printing available. Some of the uh, package stores like the UPS store or mailboxes, etc., those type of stores will have copying and printing, you can go to your local library and see if they have copying and printing services available right now. Uh, we've also heard anecdotally that some of the smaller libraries are opening. So if you're there's a big library branch near you, it might not be open yet. But if you have like a smaller library in the suburbs or a smaller library within the city, um, that some of those may be open. 
So however you get it done, you'll want to make sure that you get everything printed. You're going to sign all of the documents that require a signature. Uh, and then you're going to make photocopies of everything. So you can see over in this column titled copies needed, how many photocopies you need of each document. So two of the financial disclosure, three of the proposed marital settlement. So you'll get all of those done. You'll gather the additional stuff you need, that proof of service document that we mentioned before, the parent education class certificate, so the certificate that just said that you um, completed the parent ed class, those manila envelopes we discussed earlier. Make sure you don't need to put anything in the envelopes. Uh, they are just going to be filed with your paperwork and the court will use them to send you stuff. If you are using a fee waiver, you'll make sure that you have the fee waiver. It looks like this and the order that goes with the fee waiver, it looks like that. Um, you'll want to make sure the fee waiver does need to be notarized. So what you can do is you will take the, uh, the fee waiver to room 104 of the Milwaukee County Courthouse, bring a photo ID with you, you can get it notarized there. And then you will take the fee waiver up to room 609 where they can approve it. Uh, to get it approved, you will need to show proof of public assistance. So if you get Badger Care or Food Share, uh, make sure you have the My Access app on your phone and can access that page with the little stick figures that says, you know, these people get these benefits for this month. Or um, your eligibility letter if you're doing something like SSI. If you're trying to qualify based on income, then make sure you bring a month's worth of pay stubs or uh, your unemployment benefits or whatever your income source is at the moment. Once you've done all that gathering, you're going to take all of the forms to room 104 of the Milwaukee County Courthouse. They are open from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. every day. After you file, um, you'll go ahead and leave, and then the court will send you the paperwork with a hearing date. It may take them several weeks to get back to you, so be as patient as you can be. If it has been a month and you haven't heard back, you can either contact the court or you can contact us at MJC Divorce so that we can try and help you figure out your next step. Once you get the paperwork back from your from the court, that's when you need to get your spouse served. You'll need to serve a copy of the financial disclosure, the proposed marital settlement, proposed parenting plan, and the order for pretrial order to appear. Um, and you do need to get your spouse successfully served. We're going to go through just very quickly some of your options for service. We recommend serving however you successfully served part one, if that's an option again. Um, please do note, all, not all of the service methods I mentioned here will be appropriate for all situations. If you're not sure, you can email us at mjcdivorce at gmail.com, or you can go into the Marquette Volunteer Legal Clinics to get some legal advice. Um, you can serve through the sheriff, um, take the documents uh, to 102 of the safety building and serve through the sheriff there. The great news is they accept the fee waiver, so if you got a fee waiver, they'll do it for free, but... If you, um, if you don't get a fee waiver, they're one of the most expensive ways and they require an address. So if you're not certain about the address for your spouse, that could be a problem. If your spouse doesn't live in Milwaukee County, you can serve through the sheriff in their county. Uh, you can serve through a private process server. So a private process server does just like the sheriff does. They take paperwork out to individuals um, they may not require an address, but they also won't accept the fee waiver. You can try serving through a third party friend or family member. Uh, they need to be 18 years old, live in the jurisdiction, the state or place where your other person lives so that they can serve them. And they need to not be a party to the case. They'll hand the documents to your spouse and then they, they, the third party will sign an affidavit of service. You can also do an admission if you're confident your spouse will attend the final divorce hearing. Um, you can hand them the documents yourself. They will sign something swearing that they got all the documents and give it back to you. Uh, your hearing will most likely be remote by Zoom or by phone. The court will give you information about how to join that remote hearing. So you'll want to make sure that you attend. For a lot of people, that is their final divorce hearing. For a handful of people, it will be the first of several hearings. And that is all there is to filing the part two separately with minor children. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful. If you need additional information, you can contact us at mjcdivorce at gmail.com. Now go out and represent yourselves well.